Happy to be here, and I have a message for you. Uh, today's message is called, What's Love Got to Do With It? And it's absolutely everything. So if you're a little bit older, Tina Turner sang it. She said, what's love got to do with it? If you're younger, Matt Joe and Ashanti sang it. He said, what's love got to do with it? But I'm saying it's absolutely everything. Because love is the most used word in our vocabulary, but yet the least understood. Uh, I'm going to start off in 1 Corinthians. Now, I hope you brought your Bible to turn your finger because I'm going to move today. And if you didn't, just uh, let your heart hear the message. over being up here for the last three weeks, but I'm just going to take a second, give myself a second, uh, excuse me, the Lord, talk to my body, bless this message, anything in it you don't want in it, take it out, anything not in it you want in it, put it in, I thank you for this opportunity to minister to you, I'm humble, I'm blessed, let me be a blessing, thank you Lord, in Jesus name, amen. First Corinthians 13. Verse 4 through 6, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into King James Version first, um, because most of you have one, but then I'm going to read the Amplified Version after that, because it is how I've done most of my study in comparing the King James to the Amplified. Verse 4, charity suffered long, and I'm used to my son making noise in the background, so if it don't bother you, it won't bother me. Uh, charity suffered long, it is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity if bound up not itself is not puffed up. Doeth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in, in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Now, I'm going to read, like I said, from the Amplified Version. And the reason I'm going to do that, I'm just going to tell you a quick. If you've ever met a Spanish speaking person that that's their native language, when they start learning English, we're probably going to be able to tell them what English words mean better. But in the Greek's case, uh, in, in the Greek uh, language case, most of the Bibles were translated from Greek, but the translators did not know the Greek language from birth. They learned it. So in the translation, there's some things missing. And all the Amplified does is it's more like a, a thesaurus. It just gives you more words for the meaning, but we're going to get to the same place. All right? And I'm going to read it. Because also in this case, because I want to show how the word charity is interchangeable with the word love. Because they looked at people giving. They looked at a God that overflows with love. He gives out of what he, he he's love. He overflows with it, and then we get it. And so they, they, they're they like, oh, it's giving. Oh, no, that's God. God is love, and love gives. It, it gives out of its abundance. So 1 Corinthians 13 4 through 6 in the Amplified Bible reads, Love endures long. It is patient and kind. Love is never envious, nor boys over with, je with jealousy. It is not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself heartily. It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly. And it does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done unto it, and it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. I'm going to go down to verse 12 where it continues and says, For now we are looking into a mirror that gives only a dim or a blurred reflection of reality as in a riddle or an enigma. But when we perfect, when, well, excuse me, when perfection comes, we shall see in reality and face to face. Now I know in part or imperfectly, but I shall know and understand fully and clearly, even in the same manner as I've been fully and, and clearly known and understood by God. Thir verse 13, and so faith, number one, hope, number two, and love, number three, faith, Hope and love abide. Faith is conviction and belief, respecting a man's relation to God and divine things. Hope is uh, hope is joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. And love, true affection for God and man, growing out of God's love for and in us. These three, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of all is love. Now, everybody seems to know what love means, but no one finds it easy to, de to define it. Number one, love is personal. 
two, love is dominating. And three, love is a spiritual experience. Now, I don't want to stop there. I want to also go over the types of love. In the Greek, the types of love are agape, the top kind. It's the God kind of love. Phileo is the friendship type of love. Stargay is a mother type, mother, father, uh, uh, what's it, mother, father, father, son kind of love. Thank you. And uh, yeah, speak all you want. <laughs> Help me do it. <laughs> and uh, eros, erotica, a sexual type of love. Now, this is all the world really knows. That's all when they talk about love, they're not talking about agape, phileo, stargay. They're talking about eros. Go with me to Genesis chapter 8. And uh, I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible, but it, the text is almost the same. So if you want to read along, please do. Chapter 8, verse 22. While the heat time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and heat, or summer and winter, and the day and night shall not cease. Now, I read that, uh, but I want to slow it down and read, it, read part of it again. Everybody's heard seed time and harvest, but I want to read it slower. Seed. I harvest. It's not seed time and harvest. It's seed, put your seed in the ground. You need some time. It's got to develop and harvest. Now I brought that up because I want to talk about agape. See, God sowed Christ so that he could harvest Christians. Alright, a seed always produces a harvest. Sometimes we don't reap the harvest because we get weary and well doing. But that seed is producing. And sometimes we have to reap it. We have to take in the harvest. A harvest is not a reaping. You know, it, uh, if you look at a field of corn and you're the farmer, but you don't go get it, you got a harvest. But you didn't take it in. You didn't reap it. So agape is the God type of love, a personal dominating spiritual experience. Phileo is the friendship type of love. So what does that mean? Friendship. Phileo. Friendship is developed. You have to make a friend. When you meet someone, you might like them, but they're an acquaintance. Uh, we have a lot of acquaintances, but very few friends. You see, a friend sticks closer than a brother. And you see, a true friend will never leave you. And if you get mad at each other, that's okay. You're still a friend. You work those things out. You know, this is usually how we met, meet our spouse. At first, you liked them. Okay, she liked me. She tracked me down. I, I met my wife, what was it, 90, 1990, 1991, something like that, and we talked, and I left, and forgot about it, a year later, I met her, and didn't remember the year before, she didn't remember the year before, and we talked, we just crossed the room, I'm looking at her, going, hey, wait a minute, and she looked at me, going, hey, wait a minute, and we started talking, and this happened, what, seven, eight years in a row? And we were dating before we realized that was you. That was you. And we wondered why we had such a connection. We had talked. We had developed somewhat of a knowing of each other to give a solid foundation for a friendship. All right. So now when, uh, when, the God, when we have agape, the God kind of love within us and play with others, we grow and develop and hopefully get married and then have kids. Now, I did both. I had kids. I, I mean, I'm, I might be the only person in here who, no, I'm not. Okay, I know something. I'm not the only person in here who has not been saved my whole life. I am at eight. But, um, oh boy. I, I did both. Like I said, I, maybe I'm the only one, but I'm not. Uh, a Stargate kind of love now develops. We have kids. So now a Stargate love develops a mother, daughter, father, son kind of love. For instance, I grew up in a culture that didn't show Stargate. That's just some of you. you. You didn't show love to your mother and father. You did. You loved them, but you didn't show it. You didn't do anything to do it. And I remember the first time I hugged my dad. He, he like, was surprised. But now, we hug all the time. And even better, I remember going to my dad's house when, and he was asleep. You know, he, he works third shift and he was asleep. And I didn't want to wake him up. So I went over and gave him a kiss on the head. He, he said, boy, did you just kiss me? <laughs> I said, ah, oh, shut up and take it. 